So I've dropped the majority of the sound off for this video so I can talk you through the process of threading our first piece of steel conduit. For me, I want to cut mine at 750 mil long before starting that threading process. I'm going to insert the conduit into the conduit bending machine inside of the round jaw vise. Remember, we can't use the square jaw vise around the workshop when working with conduit because it will flatten it. You notice I'm at a slight upward angle here as well. So I'm going to be working on the top section here as we look at it on the screen on the left hand side and not the lower right hand side. So as I pull back, you can clearly see I'm going to be working on this side and not the bottom side. I take my hacksaw with a minimum TPI of 24 but preferably 32 and preferably a high speed steel um, hacksaw blade. So I'm going to cut through as best as I can trying to make sure it's square. Seems odd when it's a round uh, piece of conduit. So I'm going to cut through it, making sure I keep my hand out of the way once I've got a nice groove that I don't slip onto my hand. Take your time, nice long strokes. You notice I'm using all the blade in order to cut through the conduit. And once I've cut it, I'll have a look at the end and see how square it is. So I'll bring it a bit closer in a second so you can see how square I got that end before we look at what we're going to do next. So there's the end that I need to thread slightly off. So I'm going to square it up with a file. At this stage, we do not ream it. We're just going to square the end before threading it. So I take my rough file and I'm going to square off that end before I start the process of adding a thread onto it. Remember, this is the first time we've done it. So I'll set the length of the thread. It's just the technique that we need in order to put it on and we'll work later on at getting the right length of thread if it's a spouted box or a coupler, etc. So I'm squared up and I'm now ready for the next stage. Pop it back into my conduit bending machine. Remember, I'm working on the higher end. I'm going to need to set up my stocks and dies in order that I can cut the thread. So I've got them unassembled here. I pick out my guide, the correct one for 20 mil conduit. I undo the nuts on the body put them to one side, insert my 20 mil guide. You notice there's another one in the box, that's for 25 mil conduit. I pick out my die. Again, this is a 20 mil die. You notice there's two little recesses in it. They need to point upwards because my nuts are gonna sit inside of those. So look, I locate that there. So the nuts, when I screw them down, can hold that 20 mil die in place. These don't need to be really, really tight. They just need to be hand firm spin them on so there's no grips or anything at this stage to, to lock them off. Just make sure they're nicely firmly into position. And then I need to put the handles to complete my stocks and die. So on go the handles. There is a hack on the channel as well about making this easier by increasing the length of the handles. But remember, this is the first time we've uh, attempted to thread 20 mil steel conduit. So they're ready. I'm gonna go on dry. So we're not gonna add any cutting compound at this stage. I'm gonna cut the first part of the thread. So I push really hard and slow motion. So slow movements, pressing really hard. I've got my foot on the actual conduit bending machine as well, stop it pushing over. You notice it's gripped now, I can't pull it off. Therefore, I must have started a thread. Let's have a look. You can see how I've bitten in there and I've started that first part of the thread. And that's really important that we do that without the lubrication. And now we're gonna add the lubrication next. So in comes my cutting compound. I'm just gonna brush a little bit on it. I don't need it all the way down the conduit. It's only the end that we're obviously putting a thread on. Once that's applied, we bring back our stocks and dies or our 20 mil guide and die in, and we're gonna cut the thread. One, two, three, four, and then back. You might've seen a little bit of swarf there come out. So I'll go forward, there's a the swarf coming out, and then back. That backward motion helps you clear the swarf out. The swarf is those little bits of metal that will actually break the thread. So I'm gonna wind it all the way off now, give it a tap out. So I'm gonna tap out, so I'm lose some of the swarf that's inside the actual die itself. Okay, and increase the amount of lubrication by adding some more cutting compound. One goes the cutting compound. You might see it now melt slightly because obviously that's warm where we've cut the thread onto the conduit. Once we've got enough of that on, we can go back in again. The first part should spin on really easy. So we find the thread and you see it spins on one finger all the way down to the point at which it stops and then three or four turns turn back, swarf drops out, and we go again. What I want is about three threads hanging out the back of the stocks and die. So as our first ever thread, that's the length in which I'm looking for. So we look there, we count about three threads coming out the back of the die. I'm happy with that. So spin it back off, and there's still some more bits of the process to go. You see all the swarf there. Pull it off, gonna need to tidy it up now. 
We need to work out the length for this one is about just over halfway into a coupler and the bush. So you don't need that at the moment. You just need that three threads hanging out the back. But that's the thinking behind it as we move forward. Bring in our ream in tool. Ream out the ends. The sharp ends in here can damage the single insulated cables within it. So it's important it's reamed out. You can see now that running edge is now nice and smooth where I've reamed out the conduit. Could use a round file. We're using a reaming tool for this one. Put my finger in, no sharp edges. Need to tidy it up now just by wiping it over. And there we have it. That's our first thread done. But of course, we're gonna return these back onto the shadow board at college or somebody else is gonna use them. Let's make sure we remove as much of the swarf as we can. Tidy it up. Okay, the swarf gets inside there, it will damage this thread. And that's us finished our first uh, thread on conduit. This is the kit we used. We're going to go on and see another method now. I've got Steve with me today and he's got an electric threader for steel conduit. We're never going to get hands on one of them in the workshop, but you can in obviously in the industry. So let's see what Steve gets up to. Again, no hacksaw for Steve. He's in with his reciprocating saw in order to cut the conduit. He's going to cut through the conduit, making sure he keeps his hands out of the way. And there we go. That's it cut. Again, pretty square. I would suggest Steve should square the end up. I'm letting him get on with however he wants to do it. He's got a spray on lubrication now and a mains powered. They do a battery version as well. Conduit threader. So he pushes it onto the end. You notice it's going down the conduit now. I'll slow it down in a minute as it increases the lubrication. So I've slowed it down there. So it cutting the threads. Adding the lubrication this time as we go until we get down to the desired length. So down it goes. See, this is a lot easier. See the swarf dropping out as before, and it's dropping out to stop that bad thread. Click the button, reverse the process now, so I'm going to wind it backwards. So it's coming back off the conduit now. As it goes backwards, obviously cleaning that thread up. You just take it off. Once we've done, we'll see what the thread looks like, and obviously it's considerably easier. Remember, you're going to be working maybe in the electrical industry for 40 years. If there is an easier way to do it, I always suggest you take that easier option. In with the reaming tool again. Super important that we don't leave any sharp edges. Clean it up. And Steve has done his end using the electric threader for steel conduit. So there's all the kit we've used in the presentation. Hopefully this will aid us in putting the first thread on our steel conduit as we practice in the electrical workshop. Steve's just going to wind his box on now. So he's done his threads long enough to go into a spouted box. I hope this video has been some help.